Hey there. Oof. Oh, this sucks. I'm sick in Bangkok. But um, at least you don't have to see a doctor to get medication in this country. You can get medication at any any uh, pharmacy here. You just walk in, tell them what you want, and they'll give it to you. It's up for like uh, class one narcotics, you know, um, stuff like that, morphine, things like that. They don't allow you to get. But I think they do let you get steroids. I heard that's crazy. You just walk in and buy some testosterone. It's nuts. Um, yeah, I don't play with that stuff. Stay away from that, kids. No good for you. It'll mess you up bad. Just look at the horror stories online about it. But uh, yeah, I'm making this video just to. I'm here in my apartment alone. I, uh, yeah, I haven't even put any real linens on the bed or anything. I just got here a little while ago. Well, a bit ago. It's like, uh, it's like 1 a.m. in the morning. And, uh, I got a cold, a bad one. Uh, I think it's just a sinus infection that won't seem to go away. Well, I think I stopped my, uh, antibiotic cycle too early. I was taking, um, uh, amoxicillin. I just walked into a, a pharmacy and said, hey, give me some amoxicillin, 500 milligram. And take it twice a day. So I take it in the morning and at night. Uh, when I took the Air China flight, I think there's something wrong with their air filtration system. Because, uh, man, after that flight, man, I had sinus problems right away. Getting off that flight, my throat was so sore, my sinuses were hurting. And uh, it seemed like everybody else I talked to on that plane had sinus uh, and throat problems getting off that plane. It was like the driest thing ever. And I take fluids with me on planes, and I drink as much fluids as I can because I know it can dry you out. But uh, I normally fly Delta, and flying Delta, I get um, this. You can see the moisture being shot out from the air vents, like you can see the the vapor uh, coming in. Oh wait, has something on the lens. There we go. So you can see the vapor uh, coming into the plane, the, fu the fuselage. So you know. Um, you're getting some moisture, and I've never had a problem with a Delta flight like that. But that Air China flight, oh boy, that wasn't good. I didn't like that one bit. So uh, basically, what's happened? The first three weeks in Bangkok, uh, I had bad, bad sinus problems, and uh, I'm getting pressure headaches that I can feel in my jaws. But it's all starting out of this sinus right here, this one, not these three, but this one's the worst one. And it's the same one when I got off the Air China flight. Well, after almost three weeks of this, the amoxicillin I got after I've been here a week and a half, almost two weeks. So I took it for about a week. Uh, I'm not real good at taking pills regularly, so I missed them, you know, here and there. But uh, I took, you know, a few. So when the symptoms started going away and I started feeling better, I stopped taking them. I know you're supposed to continue several days after. I think that's what happened, and now it's back again, a sinus infection, and it's not going away easy. So I'm starting my amoxicillin again, and this time I'm going to take the whole thing until it's gone. Maybe even buy some more, maybe even go to penicillin. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the uh, I figured save the penicillin for the really bad stuff. But, uh, so, anyway, I uh, just wanted to make this video. I'm sick in Bangkok. It's horrible. <laughs> uh, should be enjoying myself, and I'm not. Uh, but uh, I was talking to some friends on Facebook about the uh, geckos here in uh, Thailand. Uh, funny noises they make. You have one at this apartment that I stay in. This is my apartment. I filmed it before. I'm actually on the second floor this time, not the fourth floor. I changed apartments when I came back to Bangkok. That's the same thing. So anyway, I um, yeah, I turned around. I uh, I took um, the thing when 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 you're in this building, um, the geckos uh, sound like they're tapping on glass. It sounds like you're taking your car key and like tap 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 on glass. So every time you hear it, you're like looking at the windows and the door, like what the hell's going on? Somebody knocking? I usually think it's somebody downstairs at the front door because the front doors on this building are glass. Any of you have seen my apartment video? And I'm thinking somebody's tapping trying to get in. When I first lived here the first time, I went down several times the first couple weeks I was here, 
thinking somebody was trying to get in who couldn't left their key or something at 2 a.m. and I'd go down and try to get them. It's usually when I spend some of my time uploading videos and stuff. And I found that uh, it wasn't. It's actually a gecko that does that or some kind of lizard. I haven't actually seen him personally. And then there's the 2K geckos, 2K, 2K, however they say it. The big ones with the red spots on them. And uh, those guys at my uh, my wife's family's house. I've stayed there this trip. I have the apartment, but I really haven't stayed in it. The only reason I'm staying in it right now is because uh, I'm sick and I have a newborn baby. and I don't want to infect my wife or my baby. So, And if she gets it, he's definitely getting it because she's breastfeeding, so... Yeah, I tried, so I came over here to the apartment. I'm staying here alone, miserably sick. <laughs> Whole face is under pressure right now. Uh, this this particular sinus right here is horrible. So you know, I'm hoping to get better here short quickly. So I start stuffing that amoxicillin in me. But um, yeah. So the uh, yeah the other gecko at her house, the 2K gecko or whatever, makes a. Sounds like that. It sounds almost like a, I don't know, almost like a puppy crying or something. I don't know. Really weird. But uh, you got to get used to these sounds when you're here in Thailand. It's different. I don't really. You never hear those in America. You hear crickets, things like that. But these are different. So that's about it. That's my thoughts at 1 a.m. in the morning with a bad sinus infection. And uh, thank you, Air China. Yeah, I'm blaming you. I know you didn't have that 14-hour flight from uh, JFK to uh, to Beijing. I know you didn't have uh, your air filtration system working correctly. You can just tell. I've been on a lot of flights and uh, inter uh, cross Pacific flights and stuff, and I've never uh, had any plane that had quite the air quality of the Air China flight. And I thought it was just going to be the JFK to Beijing, but when we got on the Beijing to Bangkok flight, it was actually worse. I mean, it was drier. There was no moisture on that flight. Uh, at least the, the JFK to Beijing had a little moisture in the air, but the real problem was I think the filtration wasn't really filtering well, so we were breathing bad air. But when we got the, the, Be the Beijing to Bangkok flight, whew, now that one it literally sucked the moisture right out of your mouth within five minutes of getting on that plane. You were just like, oh my God, this is horrible. And that was like a six or seven hour flight to Bangkok, something like that. So, uh, yeah, that's, um, I definitely am never flying Air China again. I have to fly them on the way back just because that's my tickets. <laughs> I'd love to change them if I could to Delta, <laughs> but uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, I would have flown Delta this trip, but suddenly, I don't know why, one minute I'm checking the ticket price is about 1500 bucks round trip, I was going to take it. And then five minutes later, you know, I went back, to, two days later, I was just waiting to uh, get another check of my account cleared before I bought them. I always like to have a good cushion in my account. And uh, so I went and I went to purchase them like two, three days later, and they shot up to 3000 or more per ticket round trip and I was like wow okay so I started looking again on like cheaptickets.com places like that and I came up with the uh, the ticket to from Air China I actually fly JetBlue which I love JetBlue I wish they were more more international and flew to more destinations uh, I'd fly JetBlue too and I like Delta uh, I gotta say the Air China flight had more leg room than the Delta flight I noticed that on the same planes the 777 if you're on a 747 or whatever, 767, they all have—they seem to have more leg room. I know they do, actually. But uh, you know, the air problem—I'll give up the leg room for that air problem. Uh, that I don't want the air problem. But yeah, Delta JetBlue was a good one. Um, I like JetBlue. I like Delta. I don't like American Airlines too much. I don't fly them very much anymore. But I flew them when I was younger, and I didn't like the service. Um, and again, now I've never flown Air China till this trip, and uh, I don't think I'll be flying them again. In fact, uh, I don't think I'll be paying three thousand for a ticket either for the same trip. But I wouldn't pay over two thousand. But uh, at the same time, I know um, I know I'll just rechange my plans or something. 
you can find tickets to Bangkok. I've done it um, in March. I did it. I flew over here for about twelve hundred bucks, uh, thirteen hundred with flight insurance. I always get the flight insurance. It's just my superstition that if you don't get it, then they're going to uh, <laughs> conveniently lose your bags on you or something. You know, so I always get flight insurance just to protect myself from unforeseen. Like right now, I'm sick. What if this turns into dengue fever? Which a friend of mine here in Bangkok was, uh, I mean, in Thailand was uh he lives in the south he's had dengue fever <laughs> when he heard he was sick that was the first thing that came to his mind was so he got dengue fever i don't want to get anything like that malaria none of that but if it happens and you have flight insurance it's a major medical thing like that it'll cover your tickets uh, you may have to pay out of the pocket to go and do what you got to do to get new tickets but uh, eventually it reimburses you or whatever uh, i've never had to claim it but you know for the extra 60 or even a hundred dollars who cares you know, it's worth the peace of mind just to have something there, you know. Um, I pace a lot, as you guys notice. Hope you're not getting busy and seasick watching my videos. <laughs> uh, oh, man, I'm not feeling good. Um, uh, hey, it's my apartment. I can wipe it on anything I want. <laughs> uh, this is my sick apartment for now. So as you can see, it's a mess. I haven't put the thing on the bed. Uh, my wife got me addicted to this thing. <laughs> I never used these in my life. Uh, we call them in the West, I guess, body pillows. But uh, we, me and my wife joke around. We call it the sausage. It's a sausage. So it's uh, not quite as big as my sausage, but it's a sausage. <laughs> yeah, I wish, right? No, actually, I don't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and the Spider-Man. I grabbed the Spider-Man pillow because I had already been laying on it when I got sick and I didn't want to infect any other pillows or anything this pillow was already here because we kind of just grabbed up whatever we wanted and we moved over to her family's house because uh, they had the room and and the main reason is we have the new baby and uh, being new parents I've never had a baby uh, she's never had a baby we've both taken care of babies after they were six months old we've had to care for children um, but neither one of us have ever taken care of a baby in its first months of life so, you know, you be smart, you know, go stay with somebody who, who knows who's been a mom. So at her family's house, her mother and her grandmother are there. Both have, uh, grandmother has uh, three children she raised, and uh, the mother raised two. And then there's also uh, the uncles there, so that's cool. <sighs> you know, he, uh, just to have people around is worth it, you know. We had to... We had a scare the first day we brought him home from the hospital. We had to run him to the hospital. I guess uh, I had just left. I had to run out and um, I don't remember what I had to do. I had to drop something off or pick something up from the apartment here because we went straight from the hospital to her parents' house. And uh, uh, we, I left and when I came back, um, I, she wasn't there and neither was baby. Well, what's going on? And well, the problem is, is that nobody in her family really speaks any English, <laughs> except for her. So, and I don't speak really good Thai. Uh, her brother speaks a little, so like he can say some words. So he managed to tell me. Oh, her brother was there. He's out there on the weekends when he's out out of school. So you know that's helpful too. Just to have anybody around helps. So I guess uh, the baby started to spit up. He was puking, is what I think it was, but it came out of his nose too. Yeah, he had just breastfed or had a bottle, so he spit up and it came out of his nose a little bit. And I guess after that happened, he didn't really make any noise. He didn't cry, so it freaked my wife out and her brother. And they went running down the street to uh, get a cab and take him to the nearby hospital, which is only about uh, 10 blocks away, 15 blocks, something like that. I don't know. So, actually, about 20 blocks, I think. No, it's not that far, though. By taxi, a couple minutes. So uh, they ran him to the hospital, and we got an 800 bot bill, and uh, pretty much said nothing was wrong. So that's an emergency room visit, and just so you guys know, 800 bot bill is about 25 bucks. I don't know. I'd have to do it on the exchange thing, but it's not much. It's below 30. It's about it's 30 dollars or under. So don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Um, to have the baby here in Thailand is another thing I'm going to be doing more videos about. I'm, I'm going to pull out the uh, the payments and everything, the receipts, and let you guys see. But uh, prenatal care, 
cost me about a hundred bucks a month, sometimes less. Most of that was medications and stuff and vitamins for her and all the prenatal care. She saw a doctor all the time. Um, the doctor would sit for hours talking to us. It wasn't like uh, rushed in, rushed out like in America. Doctor walks in for five minutes, talks to you and leaves. Now with this, you know, you got a doctor and a nurse in the room and they stay there and they, they deal with everything. Like if you get questions for three hours, they'll stay there. Um, that's what I like about Thailand. Uh, the care is way better. I mean, we're in a private hospital, so a lot of people are like, wow, it's got to be expensive. Man, it isn't. <laughs> uh, you know, the, pub, the you can go cheaper. You can go to the uh, government hospitals here, and you can pay, you know, a couple thousand baht to have a baby. You know, nothing much, you know, a couple hundred bucks. Something. Somebody told me you can have a baby for $200 in some of the main government hospitals. Other people said 500 but uh, any which way you look at it, that's nothing. I mean, you can have a baby I know in the hospital, the private hospital I was in, which we never had to wait for anything. Uh, I've been to a government hospital for my wife's uh, grandmother's cancer treatment. And, you know, we go there at 6 in the morning and be there until 3 in the afternoon sometimes with the thousands of people that are there waiting. It's very much government kind of feeling with a uh, government hospital, I guess, any country you go to. Because... <laughs> uh, you know, free clinics, stuff like that in America, same kind of thing. Uh, when I was young, uh, I grew up with a single mother. Didn't have a whole lot of uh, opportunity yourself uh, financially. And so, you know, I've sat in a few of those clinics when I was a kid. And, uh, wow, it sucked. And I hate it now, and I'm willing to pay the money to not have to wait like that. Sitting around a bunch of sick people for hours. So, But, uh, yeah, the private hospitals here, we had our baby at Central General Hospital in Bangkok. No, it's not the soap opera. <laughs> it's Central General, not General Hospital. But uh, Central General Hospital um, and CGH. And it's uh, it was great. Our doctor was awesome. I've put up a video before. It shows our doctor. You can, I, can, I don't know. I'd have to ask her if she wants me to put up her info or whatnot, but uh, I can recommend her highly. Um, she did a great job with, with me and my wife. It was very nice and, and helped us with everything. Uh, one thing, if you're thinking about circumcision, as most Americans I know are, uh, well, they say 60% of Americans circumcise. Um, I think the number's probably higher than that. I can't believe it's only 60, but, uh, you know, that's a Western thing. It's uh, pretty much unheard of outside of the States. Even in Canada, the rates are way lower. It's like 20, 30% from what the, rate, from what the statistics say. Um, but yeah, when I told the doctors here, I want my son circumcised, they looked at me like I was nuts. Like, really? Were you crazy? Why bother? Um, then when I talked to a doctor about doing it, uh, I guess they wouldn't do it the first few days after he was born, like was done to me and others. Yes, I'm circumcised, ladies. <laughs> but I'm off the market. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a thing of preference. I personally think it's cleaner. Uh, there's a lot of debate on whether it's worth doing or not, gentle mutilation, all this stuff. I've watched a lot of videos on it. Kind of come to the conclusion, you know, that uh, we'll think more about it and maybe wait till we're in the States before we make any decisions. My wife's kind of against it. She's scared he's, he's going to hurt. And But I'm thinking about later in life uh, what his uh, things that will happen. Because uh, I know a lot of women don't like that and you guys you women that watch this video can comment on that yourselves and uh, say how you feel about that but uh, me personally I think it's cleaner and neater and uh, I know it's less urinary tract infections as well as there's been studies that have said that uh, less chance of contracting uh, HIV or any STD like uh, gonorrhea if he has it now I know I've never contracted an STD in my life and uh, you know so that's got to say something <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, um, the hospital is great. And, uh, in the end, it was about, it was about $1,600, 1,600. We had cesarean, uh, because the, she wasn't dilating quick enough, I guess. Uh, we really wanted to have natural childbirth, but, uh, we ended up with cesarean. If we'd had natural childbirth, it would have been about eight, $900 for the birth. It was 1,600 because of cesarean. Although when we did talk to the doctor who... I guess would make the decision to do the the uh, the uh, circumcision. 
kind of scared me off because I don't think they have a lot of experience here doing it. In fact, when I asked him how many he's done, he just kind of said he's he knows of them or he's like I don't know, he's very vague. I don't think he's actually done any, or if he has, not very many, uh, as they really don't do it here in Thailand. So uh, that was my worry as the not having the experience for it. And uh, then an even bigger uh, worry was the, uh, well, I mean, honestly, it was going to cost as much as the birth to have it. And they wanted to put him to sleep. They wanted to uh, anesthetize him, not anesthetize, but uh, knock him out. They wanted to use, uh, what's the name for it? I come from a medical family, too, and I can't remember. Anesthesia. They wanted to put him under anesthesia to... Uh, to, to do a, a circumcision and I mean I know this is something that in Jewish families is like done in the living room <laughs> you know um, and uh, places you know it's not it's a in doctor office procedure not even in a hospital but here they want to do it in a the hospital they want to knock him out he's only a, you know a couple months old they said they want to wait till he's a couple months old and do it and I'm like eh, you know, I think I'll wait till we go to somewhere where it's a little more routine and they do it regularly if we do it still haven't decided and I'm never going to tell you whether we did or not just for the simple fact that that's my son's privacy later whether he has it or not <laughs> I don't think I should make videos talking about what we actually end up doing so um, but yeah it's uh, I've been educating myself on the procedure and, and uh, everything about it I never actually watched one be done and uh, since me and my wife have had this discussion I figured I should go see it. I mean, I pretty much have an idea on how they do it. Um, so, yeah, I went and I watched, and uh, I was even a little squeamish for that. I don't think there's many men who could watch that and not get squeamish. Um, and I know for a fact that just seeing uh, seeing it done, that uh, I definitely wouldn't want to have had it done when I was an adult. <laughs> yeah, even if I even if they knocked me out during it and I woke up, I have heard that a family member of mine had it done after he was older, and he had a bad experience. Didn't, not that they messed him up, but it was just very uncomfortable and not very attractive to him. Uh, uh, not, not that they did anything wrong, but just to him it hurt a lot. It wasn't fun. Let's just put it that way. So, uh, so yeah, um, I don't know. Call me American, maybe. I think it's cleaner, but yeah, I don't know. But yeah, they wanted to charge like 40,000 baht to do it. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to pay you that much to do it. The whole, the child didn't even cost that. <laughs> you know, he was like 50,000 baht, something like that. Uh, I might actually have the receipt here with me right now. Let me see how much video I have left on here. Wow, 22, 23 minutes. Wow. Um. This might actually be the receipt for the, from the hospital for the baby. Oh, still plastic on the bed here <laughs> in the corner stuff. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh no, this is a VAT return receipt from something. Oh, you know what? I never thought about that. I should try to get a VAT return. For for having the baby. Ha! Huh, I never thought about that. That might be pretty good. I might get back a hundred bucks or something. I'm not sure what the bat was on that. But I can check it out. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's on my shirt. <laughs> but I'm living here alone. I'm not bothering anybody to wash my own shirt. So, who cares? Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, so that's pretty much Thailand at 1 a.m. Probably like 1.30 in the morning now. But, uh, just some of my thoughts and my brain working. How do you guys like the shoes I bought right before I came here? Torches. It's the gray torch with the suede, the gray suede. Nice. I like these. I haven't even worn them yet. I literally bought them and I've never even put, never even wore them once, as you can see by the bottom. I brought them all the way to Thailand, never even wore them. But I have, like, every color torch they ever made. I bought these, too. I haven't even worn them. I got a deal on them. But I do wear my Crocs, which I highly recommend for anybody coming to Thailand. I brought my extra pair of Crocs, but I haven't really worn them. I just wear the tan ones because they match pretty much everything I wear. I wear a lot of cargos, shorts here. And I find them very convenient for getting around Thailand. 
And again, just going in people's houses and some businesses, you get to take your shoes off all the time. So just wearing lace-up sneakers is only special occasions, I guess. Um, I just assume I'm going to wear my Crocs and do it that way. So, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll have to look around for that, uh, that receipt and uh, make a video about it here shortly. I know I've been lazy about getting to that, but um, I'll do it soon. So, there you go. That's, uh, that's Wayne in Thailand at two thirty, almost 2 o'clock in the morning. Peace.